Altså, okay, hvor du står i. <laughs> Good day, everyone. Welcome to episode 6 of Trucking and Safety Matters, a Reliance Partners monthly webinar on a litany of topics pertinent to the safety and success of owner operators and fleets, regardless of size. I'm your host, Tom Albrecht, the CFO and Chief Revenue Officer of, of Reliance Partners. Reliance is the largest independent insurance agency focused upon trucking and logistics. Today, we have a very special guest, Chad Boblett, founder and creator of Rate Per Mile Masters and co-owner of Boblett Brothers. Today's webinar, we will welcome questions and comments from listeners throughout uh, the episode, and you can do that in the chat function or the Q&A function. Chad, first of all, welcome to the broadcast, and tell us a little bit about yourself, starting with the fact that you were a Marine and how you ended up in trucking. Okay, I can do that. Um, well, I uh, finished high school, and um, I uh, instead of going to college, I went to the Marine Corps. That that was it seemed like more fun and excitement doing that, going that route. And uh, I did ten years in the Marine Corps. I really never thought about getting out of the Marine Corps once it was, you know kids they like doing boy scouts i like doing the service i thought that was fun um but after going to uh um, after going to iraq uh i seen what i see i, I was i seen what was happening where it was going to be a non-ending thing where they they would give us a few months off back in back in california or wherever your base was and then you're going right back over to iraq and uh and instead of re-enlisting i decided to get it out and uh and at that time um 2006 we were all using i didn't have i didn't have a plan on where, where i'd be working at but everybody was using newspapers for um that's you know we the internet was kind of new then but everybody still used newspapers and uh some the biggest ads in the newspapers was uh for trucking and uh make this money be drive a truck and just seem like this this is uh this is so such an easy thing to do and uh that's how I got that, that that was my start getting into trucking and uh paid for my own school got my cdl and First, my first year was with TMC, and then uh, did three years with uh, McLean, and then uh, then that's then that led for me led me going from being a McLean being a McLean to uh, starting my own trucking company, which is Boblet Brothers, and being an owner operator. So, all told, how many years now have you been around this crazy industry of trucking? My oh wow, th 13, 13, 14, 15, 15. <laughs> 18, 18, 19, something Eight. like that. 13 well, years with my authority. You know, I think sometimes in trucking, you can kind of apply the dog years times seven, in other words, because of <laughs> the way it, uh, you know, it can take a toll on everybody. But at the same time, it gets in your blood there. Well, we've got a whole bunch of things I'm looking forward to chatting about today, Chad. And so let's just jump right into it. Let's uh, power only. Uh, you're a big fan of it. Um, you like it almost regardless of the environment, but you also think that right now, where we are hopefully no more than weeks or a few months away from the beginning of the next recovery. Talk to us about why you like power only in general, and in particular, why now is a good time to be thinking about that. Okay. Well, if uh, fingers crossed and let's hope you're right. And that we are a weeks. Uh, well, weeks I'm going to put you on the spot later on uh, your crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh Hopefully we are, you know, getting close to the, to the turnaround. And one of the first signs that we'll see that uh, things are turning around uh, and getting better, it will be in power only. Um, and the reason why I say that is because, well, I've been, the 13 years I've had my authority and I've been doing it myself. Uh, um, anytime we go into a down market and as it starts to come out, um, that the, one of the signs that will show us that we're coming out of the down market is, is um, power only. A lot of these carriers, they'll have they'll they'll have more freight than they will drivers. They like they took on too much from from their shipper. Their shippers or their customers are giving them more freight than they have drivers. They've they've did hiring freezes. It takes longer to bring on drivers. And one way they can they can fix that gap is uh, hiring as independent owner operator carriers like myself um, to come get their freight. Now, what I like about it so much is once um, they're these a lot of these carriers are kind of selective. And I'm not talking about the big mega carriers. They do it as a way to move freight cheaper. But but some of the ones that like, you know, maybe around less than a thousand trucks, maybe around five hundred, they're gonna be more selective on who they who they let pull their trailers and pull their freight. That remember, they they really don't want to do this. They want they want their own guys to do it, but they don't have the drivers. And uh 
the first place they'll reach out is place, you know, for us owner, independent owner operator carriers. And they want some of the best. Once you get in, you start doing it with them. Uh, they'll give you more and more of it. And it's, so it's, uh, I, I, when I bought my 2016 Vanguard trailer, I used to tell people all the time that uh, for years, it's still a new trailer because I, I never, I never use it. I, I'm always constantly pulling somebody else's trailer. <laughs> Well, you know, that's an interesting distinction because in the last five to six years, some of these mega fleets, without naming names, have built massive trailer pools uh, offering power only. But you basically said you think the better opportunities, maybe with the 500 to 1,000 truck fleet that has power only in certain parts of the country. Can you talk about how you find out when they have those loads just for those who've never done power only before how would they learn about those opportunities i i got my start by um in power only um by posting uh, the load board that i use most often uh, most often is dat uh you can post your truck as um uh, as a power only um and uh so i've always posted myself um as having a dry van and the other option was uh, to be a power only and uh and uh, anyway, the companies will will see that you're posted as a power only, and then they call you, and that that's kind of how you get in get into doing power only when they call you, and uh, you, they tell you what they have, and uh, you'll give them a rate. And they're always looking. They're always there's always a company needing somebody at some crazy hour of the night, and if you're that one truck, uh, and usually you know you are that one truck because not a whole lot of people are doing it. A lot of people do van, a lot of people do flatbed and reefer, but you don't see that a whole lot of guides out here looking for power only. And uh, if you're the only one that's available to do it, um, then you're going to get the call. And once, and here's the the, the great thing about it is uh, once you, once you pull that first power only load with that company um, and if you can get, if you can get another power only with them, once you, then you're in their network, they're going to, they're going to they're gonna see opportunities to use you all the time for that stuff. I mean, I have really good success stories with uh, AAA Cooper. If uh, that's a big trucking company, uh, they have, um, you know, on the side of their trailers, it says AAA Cooper. And one of their stipulations in the pulling, I don't know if they pull Mercedes freight, Mercedes automotive freight. I don't know if they do it anymore, but uh, one of the stipulations when they did have that contract was uh you had to that it had to be their trucks, their trailers that brought in the freight into Mercedes. Um, you had to have one of their trucks, and uh, they thought they could get away with it by at least at least the trailer has their name on it. The truck doesn't, and uh, I liked it so much that one thing that that I even that they asked me one time. They said, uh, "Do you mind before you go into the gate?" Because I was doing a lot of these power only. I live in Lexington, Kentucky, so it's a lot of it was round trip coming out of Lexington, Kentucky, down in Alabama, and. Uh, they asked me, "Do you care before you go into the gate at Mercedes to put triple uh, to put the Triple A Cooper over the over over my name, Bobble Brothers?" I'm like, "I'll I'll do that. I'll even spray paint my truck blue and white so it looks like yours if you want me to, as, as long as you're giving me this, uh, giving me all this freight because they were giving me so much of it. Every time their drivers would call off, I, I was I was getting a call." <laughs> Wow, I used that's to, a and, great and experience. That, now, and I would, I would any... keep that. I used to keep that a secret, not tell nobody. But now that I don't pull their freight, I don't get none of their freight. I didn't want nobody moving in on it, so I didn't. I didn't <laughs> tell nobody the name of that company, but I do now because they were so rewarding working with. Is there any downside to power only? Uh, yes. One, what what's the downside in your opinion? The downside would be this. The scary downside is. Um, um, you got there's a lot more questions you need to be asking if it's if it's a if it's a say a broker that you've never used before um they might uh some nightmare stories is a as a broker will tell you you're going to go to this location and pick up this trailer and, and take it to take it to the b you know another location well when you get to this location and you tell the broker i'm here at this location this trailer this uh, this parking lot has 500 to a thousand trailers on it well, how am I supposed to find this trailer? And then they give you a VIN number and they tell you, okay, well, this is the serial or not a VIN, this is the serial number of the trailer. And you have, so I'm going to go around and look at a hundred different trailers and try to see if the serial number matches up. That that's not right. And then there might be problems with the trailer. Uh, you know, I've seen, I've came across trailers that I wouldn't pull. That's going to, you know, what, uh, talk about, uh, safety, you know, yeah. um, I've had to turn down several times trailers because they're, too out too and too rough of too bad a shape where if i if i get pulled over going down the road pulling this trailer that's going to come back on me with my insurance my safety score and things like that you know so uh 
uh, there, 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 it's those type of problems that, yeah, that, that it does have a negative side to it, a bad side. And But like you said at the beginning, um, when we've gone through a freight recession and many of the larger motor carriers have downsized their driver base, but they've probably kept the trailer fleet pretty flattish because trailers are always in demand. That'll be one of the first things that move. They'll have trailers, they'll have freight. So folks at least need to be open to the power only possibilities. Yes. Well, let's kind of can shift. I, add, yeah, go right ahead, there. Chad. Yeah. Uh, well, um, um, back when ELD, uh, ELD before the mandate came out, um, a lot of the big mega carriers, well, not even mega carriers, a lot of carriers, it became, it became very popular to do the, to do the, uh, to do um, uh, where the carrier where the carrier would have two or three trailers for one truck. Uh, I think Knight Swift, if you go look at their stats, I think they have five trailers, five trailers to one truck. Uh, all the mega carrier, and this also it even became more popular with uh, co with COVID. If we're allowed to say that word uh, with, with COVID, that that pushed uh, that I don't know, uh, a lot more of the shippers and receivers that they that that was one thing that they started demanding so, so that you're not interacting with people inside the warehouse. You would. Uh, uh, do the power you would uh they would just want you know trailer here you go pick up your trailer and go drop the trailer it was less interaction with people so that 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 that, that turned into a good thing for power only as well and it's going to be and in going into the future I, we're just going to see more and more of it so oh, i agree 100 percent. and and like you said the trailer ratios to tractors have been going up uh, throughout the 90s they generally came down as folks put on qualcomm or other trailer tracking devices and that pretty much went on to um, somewhere around 2005 to 2010. And then they began to level off. But in the last five or six years, because of the build out of trailer pools, also freight flows around the USMCA require more trailers down for cross-border freight. Uh, we've seen trailer ratios go back up and they're not going back uh, anymore. Uh, so it's a, it's an interesting dynamic you describe. Let me shift gears just a little bit. Now you're an independent contractor. You have your own operating authority. You really believe strongly in the merits of that. Can you talk about the pros and cons of being a leased on owner operator versus truly being an independent with your own operating authority? Why you vote on the latter? Well, I've never, okay. Um, I've never, I've never done the least, least on to someone. I skipped that whole thing. Whenever I looked okay. at, the, at the two different scenarios, when I went, when I bought a truck, I first looked at leasing onto a company uh, and just the restrictions. If I lease onto a company, pros and cons, they're going to, I'm going to have to give up 35%, but you know, they, they do a lot of this back office stuff. And, but if I, uh, you know, th some of them are, some of, some of them are, might be even lower than, th you know, than 35%, some 30, 20%, you know, the way they operate a lot of people that listen to this will understand but um the other scenario was uh if i got my own authority then maybe a 35 dollars or 40 dollars or 50 dollars for a load board per month instead of giving up 30 40 uh, 35 percent 20 percent uh so it just made more sense to me i'm like so what's the catch well I, I, at the very beginning i used to say to myself i don't understand why people would lease on to someone it just didn't make any sense to me to uh to have my own authority with my own authority the money's going to come to me i'm going to get more opportunity let's give you a scenario amazon they're right down the road here in lex i live in lexington kentucky and um um amazon has called me up before and said hey We've got three trailers that need to go from our, from our warehouse here to our other warehouse that's uh, less than three miles down the road. Uh, can you give us a rate and 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 get and be able to do it? It need, it's time sensitive. We need it done right now. And uh, if if um, if I, because I have my authority and because I'm answering the phone, uh, you know I'm able to take that phone call. But if if I didn't have my authority, they would have called some other random person. They would have called the carrier that I'm leased to. I probably never would have got that opportunity. Uh, and that was like uh, three hundred dollars per trailer is what I quoted them, and uh, and I was able to go over to uh, you know within like two hours move three trailers and make nine hundred dollars. Again, if I if I was leased onto somebody, I would have never got got I would have never got that opportunity. I've had people rent trailers from me. I mean, I've just seen so many scenarios where uh, business comes to me because I own a business. If uh, if I'm leased onto someone, then that business goes to them. I want to build my I want to build my name. Uh, one day I want to step out of the truck, you know, hand the keys off. Uh, to, to people that's 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 working for me you know we should all be striving to one day be able to retire or at least be able to step back a little bit and uh 
that, that I could see that vision, have my own authority. I really, it's um, at least onto someone you're helping build their name and uh, go that route. I mean, uh, there are, there are situations. I'll take my name off my truck anytime. I've said this for years and years and years, and I've been looking for this company. Show me the numbers and the freedom that I have with my own with my own numbers, and I'll I have no problem at all taking Boblet Brothers off my truck and putting your name on it. Uh, I still haven't found that company yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, taking what you just said as an example, even if you were a leased on owner operator and that larger company did call you, you're still going to likely give up. 35% of that revenue. So those three trailers you were able to move for Amazon that day, $900 becomes not even quite $600. Right. So, you know, there's a lot of ways to slice that. So um, how about, I mean, we've been through what a lot of people believe is the nastiest freight recession, if not since deregulation in 1980, then it's certainly on a par with the great housing crisis of 08, 09. Have you had some doubts in the last 15, 20 months? Like, can I make this? You know, am I going to have to go a different course? I mean, what what have you done to survive? I mean, this was brutal at times. It is. And uh, I, I, I'm on social media all the time and I, and I see how bad it is um, yep. with, with other people. And, you know, it's it was, the, the people that it's, it's been the most vicious for is, uh, is the guys that got in like right uh right after COVID and freight the freight market was booming those yep. those guys that got in they probably spent more than uh than uh, the average rate for a truck and a trailer i mean you know trucks back then they were um they were cost it more um and they got used to that big money and you could be you didn't have to use skill you could be peewee herman and fall out of your truck and get three dollars per mile uh whatever however you want to envision right. that but um, you just didn't tell it took zero skill at all to be able to do it you could go anywhere and and still end up making good money uh back when when rates were really good now and, and um since then and uh I would I would say this, this past year uh, you got you have to be applying skill you have to be uh, uh, creating relationships in order to um, to stay afloat. Uh, um, but um, if you, the thing is if you if you can make it in this market the way it is right now, then uh, you have don't be worried about the future because you're you're, you're going to do fine. Uh, it's it's those that got in when it was at the top as uh, the ones that are going to struggle with it being as low as it is now. Yeah, I agree. Um, folks that can get through this, they're going to be on the cusp of just a magnificent recovery. Wish I could tell you when, but it it will come. Been around this uh, industry since 1988. So in the darkest days when it seems like it's not going to end, it does end. And, well, and uh, to add to that, to add to that yeah. uh, what, uh, you know, I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of people, uh, the people that I talk to, they're, they're thinking that a recovery is going to look like what uh what it was at right after COVID, you know, where where it was booming and it was so great. Uh we're not that's a once in a lifetime ordeal. But and I mean it could happen, but most likely won't in our lifetime will we ever see the type of demand that came out of that came out of that situation. Right. Uh uh so don't whenever you think whenever people think of uh the future of, of something like that, that's not that's not that that's not reality. Uh, we will see uh where we're going into spring. You know, the plants, uh, people with uh, seasonal type of loads, that'll hit. We get into hurricanes, uh, those type of loads, those FEMA loads will hit. Uh, but uh, that's not how you want to run your business, especially if you're, if you're running the spot market. Those are bonuses when they happen, when those events, you know, even the polar vortex, that was a huge bonus uh, whenever that happened. But uh, uh, um, you don't want to, that's not how you want to run your operation at day, week, week after week, month. I mean, you want to stay consistent. And the thing that I found the best is, uh, is, uh, is the, who you, who you're doing business with. Like, uh, I like to do things in threes, find three brokers, find three customers. I do everything with, bro I like to work with brokers. I mean, if, if you're, you know, if you like working with direct shippers, I have at it, but do things in threes, find three really good brokers and work with them repeatedly. That's a great point. I was about ready to ask you about load boards versus relying on a handful of good brokers. You've narrowed it down to three. Uh, but um, I think what I've also heard is you've kind of got both options uh, in your holster. It's not load boards or uh, good brokers. It's it's both, right? Yes. Yes. Um, 
Yes, well, and uh, and it depends on um, depends on what's going on with uh, with the, with the demand. Um, I uh, if demand is really high, I love running the load boards and running uh, uh, and running the spot market um, uh, whenever demand is really high. But with the demand right now, demand's not that high. Um, we don't know if it's going to increase or not. But um, uh, when it's down like this, if you're if you're good at what you do, um, you you know you're you're good at um, you you show up on time. You have good equipment. You have a good safety score. All those things you're doing. You're doing the right thing. It's easy to build connections. I mean, look at some, look at go to truck stops and compare what you are to your competition. It's not that hard to be a little bit better than the rest of them. So you can always establish a good relationship and connections with with different with different people. So whenever it's slow like it is right now, uh, that's where, where that's this is where the relationships count. That's where it works out. You know, it's, it does so much. It's it helps you out uh, so much better to have those relationships, especially when it's slow. But yes, I'm going to be a spot market king if it if it flips and goes the other way. You know, if they say FEMA, you know, a hurricane hits somewhere, yeah, then uh, you know, that relationship is pretty good. But uh, I also also like seven dollars per mile whenever you know FEMA hits. <laughs> You know, and so I'm going to I'm going to take advantage of it in both directions. Uh, as much Do you as have a preference on uh, kind of mid-sized or large brokers or is it just whatever you developed a relationship with where there's a two way sense of trust? Well, I mean, I can I, one of the largest brokers, I don't care to mention their name, uh, is uh, C.H. Robinson. And I'm uh, um, I know the higher up people there. I've, uh, I'm good friends with that company. Um um, but uh, you know, I, I, I'm a really good, I, I like C.H. Robinson a lot. They're the biggest, uh, and everybody's yep. probably going to like them. They, I really don't see that many, even if you notice in my group, hardly nobody ever has that many problems with them. They're good, good, good broker to be with. But, uh, if you're trying to build that really good relationship, yeah, the smaller it gets, the more at your level, uh, that, the the better, that it seems like it's always worked out better to, to, to create that type of relationship when they are smaller. Yeah. You know, prior to deregulation in 1980, there was an old phrase a lot of truckers used, and you still hear it, you call, we haul. But in the 43 years or since deregulation, 44, um, you know, making money is not quite that simple. You call, we haul type of philosophy. So you've already given some good revenue tips, but what about short haul versus long haul, medium haul? What are your thoughts on just running randomly in a true OTR fashion? Or do you like to run short? I mean, can you just kind of give some insights on that? And we just got our first question. Um, I want to acknowledge that, even though we're not going to go to that question for a few more minutes. Okay. Um, short haul, long haul. Uh, back, oh, back to the- What's your preference? The, yeah. yeah. Well, and why? One more thing to the big bro to, to the yeah. very large broker and the small broker. Uh, where where they both come in really good is if, uh, as if you can- uh, if you can text the agent, I like instead of looking at you know the who, the broker with the name the the name of the broker. I like I like working with the independent with that agent. That agent could be with a really small one or the big one. But if but the key thing is if I can text that agent, texting text that agent uh, just seems like I, I can create a good relationship for, with with by doing that. But I'll move on to the other question. Um, uh, the over the road and uh, short haul. I'm good with all 48 states. I mean, I have the authority to run all 48 states. Of course, you're an insurance. You're going to know the tighter, yep. I, the tighter I keep my uh, uh, circle here in Lexington, Kentucky. You know, even my my insurance people will even tell me this that uh, it helps my rates, uh, uh, especially with the demand being low like this. When uh, with the demand being really low like this, I want to stay really close to uh, uh, close, go into the same shippers, same receivers, same brokers, and and be and be if uh, and to where my deadhead is not that great if I need to come back home. Uh, and so in a weak demand the way it is now, I want to stay close to home. If it if it, but I keep an eye on the all on the all the entire market. Um, back whenever they were having shipping problems out in California. I was um, I can't remember what year, but you hear about you know the ports having problems in California where they were going yep. on strike. Uh, well, whenever whenever that got resolved and it opened up, well that caused um, a whole bit, a lot of demand for trucks out in California, and uh, uh, that so I'm going to go where the demand is, and I, it didn't bother me at all to go out to California, and I made a lot of money at that time. I remember when that happened, and the the 
I told my wife, I was gone for like, and I never stayed gone that long. I was gone for like six weeks. And my wife said, uh, are you, when are you coming back home? I said, I said, when we get the house paid off, I'll come back home <laughs> so, <laughs> because I, st- I went out there and stayed out there and I kept running LA to Las Vegas, Oregon. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, even so, stayed, I, think I even did I'm... that during Christmas one time. And I actually flew, I parked my truck at the Sacramento people that know this area, they'll know what I'm talking about. There's only one, there was only one truck stop and they charge a lot of money to park at it. And I got so homesick around Christmas time that I uh, parked my truck, took an Uber to the Sacramento airport, flew home and spent some time, spent that weekend with my wife and kids and came back home. That that truck stop charged me more than what the flight was to, to come all the way <laughs> home and back. That's and, wild. And everybody knows about that truck stop that's there. So I think what I've heard you say is, uh, short haul during more difficult times, but when there's a catalyst, so a catalyst could be a, a, a crazy freight environment like 21, first part of 22, or specific to like the port situation. Right now, again, the, there's some things going on out west. The port numbers in February, the western ports were up 39% year over year. Uh, even the eastern ports were up about 14% in February. And that's against a, a growth number a year ago for them. But I, I think what I'm hearing you say is that as long as it's not a circumstance where you're just going to get one load and you know there's a chance there's nothing more and then you're going to get stuck, you know, 800, 1500 miles from home or your home base. And when there's a catalyst and there's going to be repetitive loads, repetitive runs, then that's when you want to jump in the fray on a little bit longer haul is is that correct chad yes yes absolutely get the get the good get the good while the getting's good i think it's how my dad you say it. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah get it while it's good it's kind of like uh you know so many people say uh, like uh with with the uh right now you know you'll see so many drivers say uh um gotta I, mean, I just feel like i'm working so much harder and making a whole lot less money uh well the way i like to look the way you know once once you're established and you're going pretty good looking for time to take time off when if if it, like Jan, we just went through january january 15th to february the 15th i think it's like the slowest time all the way up till march the 15th i believe is like the slowest time for van freight and trucking and uh uh if you know it's that slow during that t- it's every every year it's that way i mean there's only been right. one year that it wasn't like that and that was and that was because of a polar vortex clogged up some stuff but uh but during the last you know 13 years it's always been slow that time if you know it's going to be like that then you should think about uh uh taking that time off uh t- taking it what t- t- plan on taking that time off and then uh it's, it's not that big of a deal for you chad Instead here's a working, question when it's really hard like that oh yeah uh chad here's a question from a gentleman named brent he said i'm a new owner operator should i get my own authority to run power only or should should i just go ahead and start with a power only carrier uh, one thing I'll add to that power only that help that I want that I want Brent uh, to know is uh, I would never do power only or commit to doing power only if I did not have a backup drive a backup some other sort of trailer sitting in my yard. Oh, okay. Uh, and and uh, there's a it's um, whenever if you if you rely if power if it, then that's it's so good that we're they, it's such a great question because so many in the group i see that pop up all the time that's it's someone's first th- they hear me say the good stuff about power only and the first thing they think is well i can i get with the i can just get a truck i don't need a trailer because i can do power only no i'm, I'm not saying that at all uh I, I power only should be added to what you're already doing but i don't want you to, to rely on power only being the being the only thing you do uh because then you get caught in the situation where um where you have to do that you have to run these other people's trailers and you have to do this power only the reason why it was so good for me is because uh i don't have to take your trailer i don't have to run your power only and all, all the every time someone would call me about a power only i always quote it round trip rates i'm going to leave lex to kentucky i'm going to go to chattanooga tennessee and i want yep. Uh, and, and I want, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to charge two, just to give you an example, I'm going to charge $2 per mile all the way from the time I leave my house until the time I come back to my house and brokers will say, well, we're not paying you to, to come back home, but I don't have a trailer once I drop your trailer off in Chattanooga. So this is what my rate is going to be if you want me to do it. And that, that has been my success, but I've seen too many people depend on it and there's, and you can't depend on power only. I mean, I've seen people make it work. It's just not a good thing. 
Well, they leave themselves vulnerable. Yes, I think what you're saying is it's another arrow in the quiver, but it's not the only arrow in your quiver. So, uh, no, I think that's a great point. Um, You want both options. The more options you have, the more chance you can survive and be successful. We'll get to another question here shortly. Factoring, though, Chad, I know you're not scared of it. You rely on it. It's been critical to you surviving and thriving. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because for some people, factoring is the equivalent of a four-letter word. Yes. Um, well, and right, rightfully so. Um, because uh, if you're not picking the right factoring company, then uh, uh, p- um, there's just there's a whole lot of not not so good factoring companies that uh, could cause you a lot of problems. Uh, and what, uh, full, uh, full disclosure, I, I work with the Triumph and I, I've been working with them for uh, almost a decade, eight years or something like that, seven or eight years. And um, our, our group, the group rate for my masters, we probably do, we do over 280,000. We're getting close to $300,000 per day, five days a week. And uh, this is a really good, really good factoring company. And, uh, and out of all, out of all that that's being factored per day, we we rarely ever have we've never had a problem go past our sales agent that couldn't be solved. I mean, and that, so that's that's pretty good. Now, I don't want to I, I don't want to mention other names because uh I don't, yeah I don't, that, but there is other company there is other factory companies where we see re- repeatedly the same factory companies with the same problems. It's like they'll be offered a, maybe a cheaper rate and somebody will get with them and they find out hey they offered them a cheap rate but then they have a lot of fees and a lot of problems and they don't have any service. Uh, uh, but anyway, that, that would be my warnings on the factoring companies that you're looking at. Uh, look, do your research and know who you're getting with. The, these contracts can be vicious on the way that on the way they're worded. Uh, that's the reason why it's number one, pick the right company. Uh, but one of the great, but one of the benefits, I like to look at factoring companies as a tier level. You know, um, Triumph is going to be a, a you know a, a very high standard tier level. There's other ones that are that are just as good. You know, Apex, uh, OTR. I don't get, I don't see very many complaints. I don't know that much about them. They don't get very many complaints about them. You get into the lower tiers. Um, you're going to, you're going to see the more problems, but anyway, a factoring company, just like we had a question come up today. Why, why does it take, um, why does it take a broker? It says in their, and it says that they pay within 30 days, but it's taken some of these brokers 40 to 50 days to pay me. And what I tell them is, uh, you as an independent owner operator carrier, you're not reporting that broker to the credit bureau. You're not reporting their credit, and uh, and these the brokers they know they have to pay the factory companies uh, first because they're reporting it. That you know they're reporting their credit, but you as an independent owner operator, they you know they can wait till you call them two or three times before they pay. And that it's not usually not the case, but uh, uh, you do uh, you know you are going to be second to the factory company on getting paid. How do you feel about quick pay programs from some of the larger freight brokers, which are supposed to be a little bit like a factoring, but, you know, they take on that risk. They pay you what, within 48 hours after the load or something like that. Um, Do you have any strong opinions there, or at least what folks should be looking for as a negative if they go down that path? Uh, Well, positive. I like to, I'm I'm, uh, positive. I see it. Well, tell our guys, I tell our guys, if we're going to, if, um, some factoring companies that you sign a contract with, they'll want you to factor everything. Um, I, with uh, with Triumph, uh, they they don't demand that. You can uh, you can factor what you want, and so this gives a good option. C H Robson, and we already mentioned C H Robson before. Uh, I, I'm, I don't work for them, but uh, that, but I do like to say when I say they have a really good quick pay. You're asking about quick pay. They have yep. a really good low quick pay fee. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, I would say take advantage of that if you're with C.H. Robinson because they're if if you're needing the money if you if you don't need I mean if you're not so such in demand of needing it it is a better option than factoring in most situations because I think they're at like 1.5 percent which uh, as an, as a as an owner operator carrier you're not going to get that and there's other brokers that offer the same thing but then there's other brokers that that are that are higher than that um, in a situation remember. Con- are we allowed to say convoy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there was a situation, you know, convoy went out of business. That's public. I mean, everybody knows that, but, uh, but they offered, they offered a quick pay, uh, quick pay. And uh, guess what? You know, the people that uh, they, well, they didn't offer a quick pay. It was just standard for them to pay within, I think seven days or something like that. Yeah. Well, 
uh, if you read the news, you know, you'll see that uh, there's a lot of people that, that didn't get paid from Convoy because of Convoy going out of business. Right. Whereas if, whereas if they went through Triumph uh, and they were pre and, you know, they pre-approved Convoy, then, uh, then Triumph would have, uh, and it should have in that situation, they, they would, uh, they wouldn't do a chargeback on you because Convoy did have a good credit score until they didn't. Right. Right. Here's another question from the audience. And just as a reminder for listeners, feel free through either the Q&A or the chat functions at the bottom of your screen. Feel free to submit questions. Uh, a gentleman named Garrett says, I'd like to know about the hotshot market. If you know anything about that, Chad. There's, I'm always surprised when I see people succeed with it. Uh, and I do see people, uh, you know, read about it and see people succeed with it. Um, I get, I get calls, uh, asking about if I'll do hot shot, but these are usually people that, uh, that are thinking they're going to get a better deal than, uh, than using a regular truck. Uh, so they're shopping for a hot shot. They're thinking that they can, like, if I'm at $2 per mile, the, the, the shipper or the broker, they're thinking that they can find that hot shot. They'll be able to get that. They'll be able to get that little bitty, uh, three pallets moved at a very cheap, less of a rate. Um, uh, but uh, I, I'm not going to talk too much about it just because I don't have that much knowledge about hotshot. Uh, it just seems like when it, the easier something is, more people is more more likely to get involved with it. Uh, and plus, those trucks. I mean, those if you're before you look at getting into business like that, take an F350. You know, that's what a lot of these guys are using F350. Uh, yep. the, the the bigger dually trucks. You're going to get a million miles out of that truck, probably not. But you will. You know that my my old. Uh, Volvo, I, I got almost a million miles out of it. I mean, I'm sure it's uh, who, the guy that I sold it to. He's still putting miles on it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, you just—that's that's the kind of the thing I look at. Is uh, uh, they they're, a semi is built to be able to do that all the time. You know, the Ford F three fifty or something of that nature. Uh, they have a. They're not necessarily built for a million miles. Yeah, right, so you got to yeah, be exactly. be wary of the. Well, I would say as a rule of thumb in terms of business climate. You know, when the economy heats up and inventories are turning faster, companies are more willing to pay for that service. We we know certainly the automotive industry always has some sort of emergency because plant shutdowns are very expensive. So they'll pay sometimes, um, you know, they'll charter an aircraft depending upon uh, what's at stake. I, I call that kind of the ASAP market as soon as possible. So it's not necessarily next day. It might be the next six hours or whatever the need may be. But if if you're exploring that, Garrett, just it'll there'll be more opportunities when the economy and trucking capacity is tighter. Uh, there's not necessarily a need to pay a premium for that unless it's an extreme emergency right now. There'll be more opportunities even when it's not an emergency when capacity is tighter overall. This is a rule of thumb for that individual. Well, uh, let me let me uh, dig in a couple of other things here. So let's say someone comes to you. Well, and let me just back up. Uh, you've mentioned your uh, platform, Rate Per Mile Masters. It's on Facebook. I know many people have seen it, but for those that haven't, why don't you take 30 seconds and tell us what that forum is about? I've looked at it many times, and I think it's a wonderful source of information. So free commercial for you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm, I am um, very proud of what it's turned into. I, and I really didn't think it would turn into what it has turned into. Uh, it's, it is, uh, it is known throughout this industry. Uh, well, I did a TIE event, which is mostly a lot of uh, CEOs and brokers. And uh, before I went to speak, uh, just to like, kind of like what you're doing, you told them about the group. And, and uh, so they familiar with who I was. Uh, this is a room of in Las Vegas of about 500 people, high level CEOs, probably. Of uh, the brokers and uh, trucking carriers, and I asked, "Hey, I'm my name is Chad Boblet. Um, I'm in the Rate Per Mile Masters Facebook group. Is there anyone here that knows of it?" And uh, almost every it, it kind of blew me away. Almost everyone raised their hand. And then we we went to reception, go to eat, and everything. Had people, uh, the uh, the CEO at that time of CH Robinson came up to me. He's like, "Yeah, I'm in your group." Everybody, uh, you know, these people are in their <laughs> group. They're watching what's the the XPO at the Robert Jacob, I forgot his name, but the oh CEO, Brad Jacob, oh yeah. you know who I'm talking about. 
He, yep. I, I got an email because somebody from from him that was passed on down to the vice president and then sent to me. I could, but I seen the chain of command asking me about a post that was made in the group about XPO. I mean, these people are watching it and they're visible as soon as something's posted. We have a lot of success in the group. It's not, it's not like a meme. You're not going to see jokes in there. It is every post is uh, is pre-approved. Uh, comments are read. We're, we're, it's, there's nothing funny about the group. It is 100% business and making money in this industry, networking with brokers and, uh, brokers and carriers working together. I would say since, and we just hit our 10 year, you're asking me this at this point and and March the 4th was our 10 year mark. We just hit our 10 year anniversary, a Facebook group going on that long. Uh, I would say over, over a hundred million dollars has traded hands in the network within that group. That is amazing. Yeah. And for those who haven't uh, explored it yet, as soon as this broadcast is over, go check it out. But I've seen all sorts of questions from, you know, dealing with uh, the trailer th theft in that, questions about rates, dealing with brokers, how to negotiate better rates, comments about load boards. Heck, I think I've even seen things about, you know, some of the compliance firms can be a little bit more difficult to clean up your reputation with them versus others. Not only do you offer thoughts, but many of your uh, readers, listeners do as well. So it's a forum for everything imaginable if you check it out day after day. Uh, and, a, and a big a big subject that I think a lot of people is getting found in value, especially this last year, is the fraud. It's a, how to be aware of fraud. Our industry has been hit hard, hard with fraud issues and uh, uh, and people, people are learning, you know, how to fight against it, how to prevent it, how to it's not be coming a victim of fraud. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, let me ask you fuel ever so important for a trucker. Uh, do you do anything to get a better than retail price? And, uh, can you share that with our audience? Yes, absolutely. Um, for the, uh, for the longest time I used to, um, I used to say, uh, as now, my my opinion is coming from a one truck owner operator carrier. Uh, I know once you get to twenty, um, it's people will probably find other thing other other programs better. Uh, once you get to twenty trucks, twenty five maybe. Um, but uh, I used to I I used to tell people all the time that Nastic was probably one of the best. Uh, but since then, since then, other other um, programs come along that are. Maybe uh, as good as Nastic, or I know that are as good as Nastic. We we mentioned XPO, you know RXO. Yep. That's another branch of what of XPO. They have a decent one without so many, um, you know, fees and gimmicks. You know, th stuff going on with them. There's their fuel savings is really good. One that no matter who you have, you gotta have mud flap. I mean, if you write that write that name down, mud flap. You got. I know the I know the CEO. Uh, I know the company. Um, well, it's, it's the best way to explain this. If nobody knows about it, what's valuable about this is, uh, let's say you go to TA petrol all the time for your fuel stop at, yep. at near the, near, near the interstate. Uh, uh, a lot of the places, well, TA is on mud flat, but a lot, but uh, mud flap has a lot of the mom and pop truck stops. And, uh, you might, you might see you're getting a good discount at the TA truck stop, but you're getting a discount at a truck stop. That's already got a higher than average price than anybody else you, you if you look you know there's often a mom and pop's truck stop that's already a little bit lower well mud flap is giving you a really i'm sound like a commercial now but but it's a it's so quick and easy to have that mud flap and lock in a price and lock in your price with a code and uh, and get a cheaper price with mud flap but there's if you told me that uh that you st you're stopping at loves all the time then uh, i could name one that you probably never even heard of that that's that's doing a better deal, but who's stopping at loves all the time. So I would say my, my, my advice would be where do you stop at the most? And, uh, and look at that, look at getting it, getting your discount for that particular chain, you know? Maybe so are you saying, fun. ask about uh, a fuel discount and mud flap simultaneously kind of wherever you uh, fuel up? I would combine mud flap with whatever program you have. I would definitely combine mud flap. Because Mudflap, I don't know how he was able to create such a large network because it's all these mom and pop truck stops. Yep. And plus he has the TA in there now. I mean, that's something new, but uh, I would definitely combine it. Me, not co combining it, meaning that uh, combining it with your fuel savings program 
you ain't, you're not going to use it with another fuel card. You're going to use it separately, but, but that's how you would want to do it. You want where, so when you're planning out your trip, all right, within the next 600 miles, I need to top off. I need to get fuel. Where's the cheapest place you can get fuel. Always do it before uh, a reminder. I, I say this all the time because people don't understand it. You want to get the cheapest fuel minus the IFTA price. You're going to pay IFTA regardless. So take that price off of it. You want California, you know, they have a high IFTA tax, but, but, but you might be able to find a place that's uh, if you take that price out, you're going to pay only the miles that you do in that state. That's what I'm getting at. But uh, at, so once you find the cheapest place to get fuel, now pull out your Mudflap app and see, well, can Mudflap beat that anywhere along the way? That's how you use it. Okay. What about tires? You do anything to get uh, a discount below retail there? I, there's other people that's got better advice about tires. I like Michelin tires. Uh, I, I like Whenever I go to get tires, I'm looking for tires that's going to give me the best energy, uh, that are low rolling resistance, if, um, if you're familiar with what that means, yep. low rolling resistance. And uh, Michelin does a good, a good uh, they have on their website that will tell you what a lot of the tires that rolling resistance is, and I want a tire that has the best energy rolling resistance. Um, and uh, so I, it, um, the reason why I say that is because I'm willing to uh, – my, my, I don't think – Michelin will give you a discount as an independent owner operator carrier. It's just not that much. I think there's other programs out there that give better discounts, but I'm usually going to stick with Michelin no matter what, you know, if I can find, you know, some of the fleets, they have discounts on tires that, uh, that, that, you know, you could probably do a better discount than what Michelin gives, but uh, that's what I'm shooting for is Michelin tires. Cause I like Michelin. Oh yeah. No, that's great. Um, what kind of freight do you like to avoid? Um, I mean, we talked about length of haul earlier, but, you know, let's delve a little bit deeper. Freight you want to avoid. It could be a certain type of customer profile or it could be certain markets. So it'd be other things. Just uh, talk about that for a moment. Okay. Uh, salvage, anything salvage, uh, salvage scrap, I, uh, recyclables. I, not, no, I'm, I don't want none of that. The, Is it because it's cheap or because there's a long wait time on uh, the loading and unloading or what? Uh, it's going to, yeah. The, what, what uh, the, the items I just mentioned, right. You know, recyclables, yep. uh, 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 th that type of category, it's going to be uh, the, usually the more it weighs, the, the less it pays. It's usually it's going to be heavy, and uh, it's not a load with demand. Like let, let's let me tell you, uh, like load. We mentioned automotive parts going to Mercedes. What what do you think has more of a higher priority? A high, a high, that's going to have a higher rate associated. Uh, the automotive parts going to Mercedes, or a load of empty plastic bottles that need to go to a recycling plant. You know. <laughs> Uh, you see what I'm saying? That that Mercedes the parts load is going to have a, there's going to be more, more money in it. And usually those other loads they can sit around and wait until the right person is cheap enough to to take it. Let me tell you what the worst load I've ever did. No, I'd like to hear it. You want? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I I hate thinking about it, but when you but when you asked me, it was the first thought that came to my head, and I did it years and years ago. Uh, and I'll make it fast, but it was a it was out of uh, Florida. Uh, What's a little Peninsula, Pensacola, Florida? I think. All right. So anyway, it was a load of a uh, um, a big big broker. They called me up, and asked me if I want to do the load, and, and you know, Florida is horrible for vans. Uh, and uh, so I was desperate for whatever I could get. And I knew it was going to be bad coming out of Florida. And when this broker told me they had it and it was paying somewhat decent, and I'm like, okay, well, yeah, that's better than anything else around here. Plus, it's going right by my house. You know, it's going to Cincinnati. <laughs> I get to go right up I-75 and and uh, and take it to Cincinnati and I'm done and I'm going home. Um, so it had, it, it, it you know, had, I, I like that idea. And uh, they gave me the address and she told me what, what, the, what the load was. And, uh, and she said, it's, it's raw hides. And uh, I'm like, okay, what's that? I really didn't know, understand what that was. And uh, she, t uh, and I don't think she gave me a very good description of it. And I really didn't care. You know, this, Oh, what? Whatever it is, it can't be that bad. And she says, and she says, well, you might have to wash out the trailer uh, when it's done. I'm like, well, so why would I have to do that? And she says, well, it's salt it, and you might get some salt in the trailer. Anyway, wow. I show, so I get the address to where this place is picking up. Raw hides, you know, raw hides is like uh, animal skins. Uh, oh, and uh, I mean, this is something that I that you would never put into a dry van trailer. I mean, I wouldn't think you would. You'd put that in a reefer or something. Right. But, uh, I showed up this shipper, and it's like. Uh, 
It's like this old church building that's been converted into a warehouse. And uh, where you know it has those big church windows, and well, those were docks that you backed into, and it and it's hot and sticky and muggy because you're down in Florida, and I could smell this place. My gosh, it was horrible smell. And then as you're pulling up to it, and you're like, I got to load at this church. What am I getting here? And uh, and the puddles it had rained, and the puddles were 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 bloody puddles were were because it was the raw hides. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it was the horriblest thing ever. And then when I when I got when I, I got loaded, they brought the paperwork out to me. Uh, I had to drive from Florida to Cincinnati, and uh, uh, I remember I remember when I, I finally pulled over to to rest and do my ten hour break. But while I was in the sleeper, I kept thinking, "There's only this wall and another wall separating me from that raw hide." I just, <laughs> my skin was crawling the whole the whole time. I couldn't wait. I'm like, I gotta get this stuff off my trail. That broker said, what, what, that broker said, well, I get these loads all the time. If you ever want any more, I said, I'll never, I'll never do that again for my the rest of my life. <laughs> anyway, that's one of the worst loads I've ever done. Don't, don't always ask what the load is, and if they tell you it's raw hide. I mean, and the forklift drivers in Cincinnati, they had the hides on top of their forklift to protect them from rain. I couldn't believe it. I mean, this is the grossest thing ever. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> hey, a couple more questions before we wrap it up here. So uh, still on the subject of freight you would avoid, are there certain metro markets that you try to avoid, even if it's a better freight market, because it's just too imbalanced? It seems like Dallas has been changing what used to be you know, inbound only, but with the massive growth in dcs there's more outbound there so maybe it's a little better than it used to be but just any thought we always know florida has its own issues as you previously described what else uh markets that you're you're going to be leery of I'm, I, I'm not saying you would always avoid it but you're going to be a little more cautious about i'm always um checking supply and demand uh, okay uh the uh, the, the way your question's going uh you know, of of course, the the the, the different the recyclables and stuff like that can go. You know, I've, I've told you about automotive. I kind of like sticking to it, and uh, I kind of avoid food products uh, just because I don't mm. like messing with lumpers and food warehouses. But if but if we're talking about markets, then I'm always looking at supply and demand, and that's where I do best. I mean, that's you know uh, the reason why I talk about rates all the time is I'm fascinated about supply and demand. And why do I like Bitcoin? Supply and demand. It it, it resonates with me. It's a math that I understand. I want to go somewhere where there's more freight options than there are trucks. And so uh, a lot of that would come from DAT, the load board, DAT. Uh, yep. I use it. I've been, used, I've been using it from day one uh, and looking at, and it'll tell you, it's got the tools that'll tell you the, uh, um, um, how many, how many trucks are in the area, how many trucks are looking for freight versus how many, how many loads are posted. Um, and, I, and so that, I mean, that's probably one that is, if I were to say that the, my biggest tip is the, oh, that I always try to, I'm no, regardless, I'm going to make sure that, that I'm staying in those really good areas. And not everybody does that, you know, again, go, comparing myself to other people, I'm just doing one little thing that others are not doing it and allows me to have a, a an edge on the market uh, and, and be able to, and be able to go to those. I want to go somewhere where, where brokers are going to want me, you know, uh, I do a whole lot better when they want me. I, you know, if, in like Florida, then you're kind of we're, we're just talking about Florida. You're going to be in an area where there's ten trucks to one load. Well, you that starts to create a whole lot more problems. And, and then yep. uh, DAT will show you. You know, you can use the the, mar, the hot market map. There's different tools on DAT that'll tell you where it's good, where it's not. With uh, Florida, if there's ten trucks and there's a uh, and there's only one load, uh, the broker gets to name their price. But and then not necessarily you even get the load. You know, there's some of you all are going to have to deadhead out, and that's why one of the uh, uh, advice I like to give that I got from another a truck a truck driver was take your backhaul with you. Like uh, if I'm going into Florida, I'm going to make sure uh, that I, I run I run that I get enough, paid enough money to be able to bounce out of Florida. Maybe you might have to bounce all the way to Atlanta if Atlanta is doing good. Uh, but that that's kind of the, you know, and there's other things that's that's bad about going into a very weak market. Northeast, Northeast. I hate going to the Northeast. Uh, you know, anything Pennsylvania, Northeast of that. I mean, some people do okay with it with a van. I don't like it. But uh, when you run into situations where the, where the demand for trucks is not as great, other problems as in um, e so even the cheaper load, the broker might not want to pay detention. Like like if you start asking for detention up front, telling the broker I'm gonna that this is what my detention rate is. And there's, 
and there's five other trucks that could be that could take that same load well the broker would be like no we don't pay detention i have four other options or five other trucks over here that i can call that uh that'll, that'll go and do the same load you know wow Does that hey, last sense? question i'm going to ask you to look into your crystal ball a little bit uh, i think you made some um uh, very clear comments at Matt's recently. What do you think is the outlook for the remainder of this year, first for freight volumes, and then secondly for freight rates? Well, we, we've kind of hit on a little bit of that. Um, the, the, one, the one thing that, uh, uh, where I'm on social media and I'm reading, you know, what other people were talking about, nobody's going, nobody right now is saying that, Oh, um, like we're going in bids for 2024, right? Yep. And uh, nobody's coming out saying, pumping their chest. Well, I'm bidding a whole lot higher than I ever did the years before. You know, uh, nobody's doing that for 2024. That right now, the people that are getting contract or that are winning contracts is because they came in real low and bid real low. Now, um, so the few, so. In my opinion, in my opinion, when I see, when that when that's happening, and th that's a very good sign. That's very good for the spot market. That's like one of the best things for you know. The, uh, you're not going to never discourage me by saying that. The reason why I say that is because that freight will have to move. Uh, yeah, the the big mega carriers that they'll move it, but they're not moving all of it. They're not. They're, they're going to have to give some of it to the spot market, and that because they have to give that freight to the spot market. A lot of us guys, I think, well, you know, you mentioned that last, what's, what's that conference that you said you went to at the very beginning of this? Oh, uh, Truckload Carriers Association, TCA. They, that's the name. That's the name. I read a report from them, and, and I mentioned this at Matt's, but I still couldn't remember that name until you just mentioned it. I read one of the reports that talked about the break-even point for carriers was 207 per mile, 2.07 2, 2 per mile. Uh, is the so carriers have to make at least that well if you go look at the averages for the past four months i think the average comes out to to write at two 2.08 per mile and that what i'm getting at is we re you rarely see for the national average all 48 states we ever go much below that if there's a breaking point for carriers well if they're gonna if they're gonna have to uh where if they can't make no money at all, then they're not going to, then they're just going to shut the truck off and not run. You know, they're yep. going to stay at home until, the, until they can. And, and, and that's, and that's what you're seeing with that study. It says that 207, which was kind of ironic that if you go add up the last four months, it comes into around that 208 per mile, 208 per mile. Anyway. So with uh, looking at the future and with the, uh, with the, everybody pushing really hard, to get as the to get to get as much to get the loads and they're pushing go pushing rates really low. Well, they're only going to they're only that means a whole lot of freight's going to be sitting around and then and it's going to be sitting on the, on the spot market and carriers are not, are not going to be taking it. But loads eventually uh, will have to go and that means excuse me that means they will have to come up on their price. I mean, so that if there was anything that and I mean some of that some of that stuff is coming from uh, I get some of that wisdom from C. H. Robinson. Uh, yeah. From very senior level, Steve Robinson telling me, telling me that, hey, you know, this, this is what the spot market looks like in the in the future. We're really close to that happening. And uh, another one, freight waves. A good report. Uh, so I'm constantly reading, uh, reading. Yep. I, I don't, I don't just make up some wild thing uh, with the thing that I'm looking at. Positive, and I'm, a, you know, I like think of, thinking of things positive. Freight waves. They just put out uh, a really cool graph. I think it was freight waves. I've been DET. But they put out this graph of carriers leaving the market and carriers coming into the market yep. for a long period of time, going all the way back to at least 2014. It might go back. Even, I think it goes back even further than that, but I just remember the graph only showed there's never been a period of time where uh, where we've had such a, a decrease, people getting out, carriers getting out of the industry as we have like the past six seven eight months anyway we're coming but if you look at the end of that graph we're coming back to equilibrium what well, equal where there's as many leaving as there are coming in and uh, yep. that's a good sign that uh, people are finding opportunities even with the, the way the market is now well my tagline has been uh this year we're in like a lamb but we may finish the year out like a lion normally that phrase is said in reverse but uh, indicating that we may start kind of soft and mellow, uh, but finish the year on uh, much much stronger uh, momentum. So I'm I've got my fingers crossed on that. So I, I don't think it. 
Oh, another thing is I would, uh, that's a good point. A good thing to say, but the, uh, I don't think we've, um, I don't think we're going to get any worse than where we are at, where, than where we currently are. I think yeah. the worst is behind us. It ain't going to get no worse than this. Uh, I agree. I agree. Well, listen, Chad, uh, we're right at one hour here. This has been a fascinating discussion for our viewers. Uh, we will have this on YouTube in the next day or so, and then it will be on our podcast format format, excuse me, within about a week after that. So I'll make sure that everyone gets access to that. Chad, I can't thank you enough for your fantastic uh, insights, your enthusiasm. Uh, I know folks heard a lot of good tips on how to make money. And really, all you got to do right now is just survive because there's another period of thriving that's coming. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, so uh, always like that with the spot market. Uh, yes, absolutely. Good times are coming. Absolutely. Well, Chad, take care. Happy Easter to you and everyone uh, listening. And uh, here's to better days. Take care. Yes, sir. Good talking to you. Thank you. Bye-bye.